Hello again, everyone. Just hello, wait. hello. <laughs> Just waiting for more people to log in. I see Rosie's here and Spencer and Melvin and Madison Alexander. Oh, Kimberly's here. How are you? Amani. So this week, I've already posted it, by the way, you can look under week 13 in our lab course, uh, but I've already posted it. It's, uh, uh, it's actually a time consuming but easy lab. So your goal is to create a figure like the one in our textbook in chapter, I think it was two, uh, where we had the picture of the uh, actual constellations of the zodiac around the outside, and then you had the sun in the middle and a orbit of the earth and then of course it had it marked by months and stuff like that you're going to create that diagram yourself uh, ideally using starry night which is what came with your package for your course if you bought the stuff from the bookstore but if you don't uh have that or you don't have the sky or redshift or uh voyager sky gazer or any of those then you can use heavens above and i'm going to show you how to do that in a second so that's this week's lab uh you'll see there's a write up on it. What you're supposed to do is record for the first of the month. If you want uh, to shoot for extra credit, i.e. Uh, if I see that you did something better than the bare minimum, then I'm going to give you Astro points in addition to the actual lab assignment grade, which would be a 100 if you do everything you're supposed to. Uh, but other ways that you can get Astro points would be instead of just doing, say, the 15th of or excuse me, the first of each month, you might want to do the 15th of every month as well. Uh, but the deal is you're going to go on the first of every month, go to 11.59 p.m. or 23.59 p.m. Uh, 23.59 without the p.m., of course. Uh, and you're going to locate what, what constellation as well as what part of what constellation is due south of you for your particular location on Earth. So you're going to have to you know, put in your uh, longitude and latitude of wherever you're going to be observing. Don't put it exactly your house. I, I don't need to know exactly where you guys live. Uh, I don't want that ever coming back to get me or something like that, so uh, don't do that. Uh, but you can also use, you know, the Heavens Above actually has a thing where you can click on the map and just choose some random spot in Virginia Beach or Chesapeake or Portsmouth or Virginia, anywhere that's fairly close to you, Suffolk or whatever. You can post that and then they'll give you a, a longitude and latitude for that location. You can make that your site and then just go through on the first of each month. <sighs> And look for one of the constellations of the zodiac, possibly also Opiocus, which is really along the the, uh, the ecliptic as well. So you could you might even include a Opiocus reference. But you're not only going to get what constellation is due south of you. You're going to try to find what part of it is due south of you, so you can sort of accurately portray it in the diagram, like we had in in chapter two, I think it was. Uh, and you're going to actually accurately get the orientation of the constellation. So I would recommend you guys go through, uh, do a search for zodiacal constellation stick figures. H.A. Ray uh, did some of them. Does anybody know who H.A. Ray is? No one? No one knows who H.A. Ray is? Uh, I'll give you a hint. There's a little monkey and a man with a yellow suit. Are you talking Sorry, about Curious George? Oh, yeah, I was about to say Curious George. <laughs> yeah, yeah, H.A. Ray is the artist and creator of Curious George. He's also a bit of a astronomy aficionado, so uh, he's actually has a list of constellation drawing stick figures for uh, the constellations. So that's one version you can look up, but you can look up a bunch of different versions. I, I find that I mix and match like my favorite uh, zodiacal uh, stick figures are some from H.A. Ray, some from the International Astronomical Union and others. Uh, so I just mix and match and find the ones that I like best. And what the ones that you like best are, if, if you don't already know what constellations uh, of the zodiac look like in the night sky, then you probably don't have a favorite one. So what I would do is, is try to find one that has a shape that you like uh, that you might remember and then use that shape and then you can use that shape from there on out to look for it. 
I use ones that look most like the shapes that I recognize when I see, for instance, the constellation of Virgo. I see this sort of bracket thing that uh, almost looks like a, a, a deck chair. Uh, and that's partly because a person in one of our uh, users, Digistar user groups, actually made a whole video of how these constellations look like summer scenes, beach scenes, and stuff like that. And she used a uh, lounge chair for a, a full So time. how do we determine exactly which constellation is due south? Okay, so let me get you to that part. Let me uh, start with the sharing of the screen. And I think that'll be this screen. And I switch to this tab. Everybody looking at uh, is everyone looking at uh, the Heavens Above website right now? On yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, if you're using an older computer, you might need to use the old version of the sky chart, but I doubt anybody has an old enough one that where they have to use that. They're so going to use the interactive sky chart. And I don't know why I did that extra ad. Okay. Uh, when you first log on, it gives you a longitude and latitude. Uh, in this case, it actually is pretty, pretty close to uh, my area. So I'm okay with that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this one and we can look now. And remember, the way this works is this is due north and this is meant to be held overhead. That's why west is on your left, or excuse me, on your right and east is on your left uh, because it's meant to be held overhead. What we're going to do is advance the time uh, to 11. Let's see if it'll do 23. Yeah, it does 23. And then I'm going to make this 59. And I'm gonna make this zero. And I'm gonna that <laughs> okay. I don't know why that's having a problem with 59 now. It literally just did that. Uh, you have 59 in hours, not minutes. Oh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> date. No wonder I put the date in the. <laughs> Let's go ahead and change that to one. That might help. Thank you for catching that. Uh, 12 and 59. Yeah, I was off by a sequence of one here. And let's say instead of the hour, let's do 23. Yeah, that's good. So let's say update. Okay, so now I've got uh, April 1, 23rd hour, 59 minute. You could do 2400. This is close enough. What, what you want to do is you can see that due south, remember uh, radial lines, lines from the edge to the center which include these lines, these are all vertical lines. So what you want is something due south of you. So you want something along this vertical line and between this horizontal line and this edge. So clearly you can see roughly this part is due south of me and the constellation obviously is Leo. But if you actually look at the star, it reads your azimuth. See that says 172? An azimuth of 180 is exactly due south of us. So you can see this is a little to the left, about eight degrees to the left of due south. This is about 14 degrees, 15 degrees to the right of due south. So maybe you need to be a little bit closer here. So what I would do is I would quickly sketch this Leo stick figure and put a mark right here and say, this is due south of me. Not only that, notice that Leo is horizontal. See, it's like his head is vertical. His back is almost horizontal. That's the configuration or that's the orientation of the constellation that I want you to record. So you would write down April 1. You might say that this particular star, which is called uh, Beta Leonis, which you know is Denebola, that's the tail of the lion. Ola is of the lion and Deneb means tail. You can write that that's just at 172 and you might record that this is at one. Uh, 94, so you'll know to get closer to that, or you might just draw the thing and put a little star right here to show that you should be roughly here, because this whole distance is 14 plus 8, which would be, what, 22 degrees? And you really only want to go 8 degrees over, so you want well less than half. 8 out of 22 is what you want, so maybe right here is due south. That would give you a really accurate uh, representation of it. So that's your April 1. 
again, if you want extra points, you might, uh, after points in, in addition to just the lab, then you might want to do a 15th as well. Don't have to, that actually makes your drawing quite cluttery, but it might actually help you better orient yourself because some of these constellations are really small and uh, you'd be more accurate if you had that. So let's do now instead of April, let's go to May. Update again. Now we can look and we see the constellation of Virgo appears to be due south. And guess what? That star right there, which is Eta Virginis, is exactly at 180.1 degrees. So that one's right on the money, exactly what we like. Notice we've uh, completely skipped whatever's between Cancer and Leo and Virgo. No, no, okay, yeah, I forgot Virgo is the big one. Uh, so my picture of Virgo, for instance, goes from here, and I think it even goes from maybe from here. Let me see if that's right. Yeah, it goes from these stars down here like that, and that's how you can see it's actual sort of like a reclining chair. So yeah, Virgo is this one. If we go instead of May, now we go to June 1, update. Now we can see due south is evidently Libra. And in fact, this particular star, which is Gamma Libre, is essentially due east, that's 180.5. This is not my favorite drawing of the stick figure for Libra. Libra has a better stick figure that's like, uh, looks literally like scales. So there's like a triangle with the, like three lines sticking down. That might be a better choice. But the good news is that one particular star in Libra right there is due south. So you can uh, use that. Obviously, the next one's going to be uh, uh, Scorpius, and then the next one after that would be Sagittarius, so on and so forth. But when you're all done with that, you'll make a figure just like figure, I, I tell it in the actual lab, but it's like figure 3.14 or something. So let me go back now to that. I don't want this one. I don't want this one. Maybe I want this one. Yeah, so I'll go to the modules. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a big circle. So you might try to use as big a paper as you want. You might actually take the, because you're not, your intent is never to print this out, but to rather to use the graphic. Well, you might choose to print it out. If you choose to print it out, then make the margins narrow. If not, make the, the margin zero under the layout tab of Microsoft Word. But what we're going to do is this one right here, which hopefully it will show me in Microsoft Word version. I should have just opened up the original document instead of doing it through here, we'll see. So yeah, figure 213 is the figure I'm talking about. If you flip to page 34 of your textbook, you'll see that figure. But what I want is like a big circle or you can do an oval and that big circle is gonna have each of the zodiacal constellations in their proper orientation and you're going to mark April 1, like if you take, you know, there's 12 months in a year. If you take 360 and divide it by 12, you get uh, basically 36, or excuse me, 30. So each month will be roughly 30 degrees. So you mark off in 30 degree increments on the circle. And at zero degrees, you might put uh, May 1. At 30 degrees, you put April 1. At 60 degrees, you put, uh, or excuse me, March 1, not April 1. Uh, then, uh, or not May 1. And then 30 degrees, you put April 1, and May 1 uh, would be at 60 degrees. June 1 would be at uh, 90 degrees, so on and so forth. And again, you try to orient the constellation stick figure just like you saw it when you were doing this. So that's the importance of making a table of dates with uh, the actual picture of the stick figure that you want to use or just a stick figure that you can later choose a different one for. But the main thing is you need the orientation so that you can put it correctly. And then when you're all done, you'll just have basically a figure like that figure in your textbook, which is on page 34. That's all you got to do. This is a thing I'm, I want you guys to do on your own though. It's not something I want you to uh, group together. Y'all can, of course, communicate with each other. I just don't want it uh, to be a group project. I want everybody to do it. I want you all to decide on your own uh, stick figures. And I want you to turn me in uh, that document. Okay. 
I will put the link. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll go back to my modules. I'm going to put the link to turning this in. And when I go to grade it, if I find out that uh, you've done more than what was required, then I'll go through and put uh, Astro points in the lecture portion of your course. Uh, you may want to turn it in if you have another instructor for your lab. I mean, for your lecture, you might want to see if they'll take it. Uh, what page was that in the book? I think I said 34. Page 34? Mm -hmm. I really hate this website. <laughs> So I've now created a link for the assignment. I'm going to make it where you can turn stuff in. You're going to do it like always. You're going to make it as big as you can on an eight and a half by 11. I thought Word gave us versions where we could use other size paper other than eight and a half by 11. If your version allows you to do that, like, you know, something bigger than eight and a half by 11, by all means use that. Otherwise just go with eight and a half by 11 and at least make the margins narrow. And uh, what you're going to do is put all that in. You can use actual, uh, either make the drawings yourself that you like for the individual uh, Constellation stick figures, or you can just steal uh, GIFs or JPEGs and paste them into your document. When you're all done, I have to have the uh, document itself as a PDF. So you just save it as a Word document with your name in the file name. And then uh, once that's complete, you like it as it is and save it as a PDF and, and send that to me. Or excuse me, post that here. And of course it's supposed to be due a week from today. So you want us to draw what we see pretty much on that page. Yeah, but in your own version, because that one, it's not really clear whether they're marking the date by the middle of the month, the first of the month. Now you actually know because you're going to do it by the first of the month. Okay, so in we the need same to make font. Sorry. In the same any file or in a different file? Oh, oh uh, no, any font you want is fine because all I care about on this one is the actual diagram. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I didn't ask any questions or anything. So all you got to do is make the diagram. So you just want us to make a giant ring with all all those that are of the southern border of stars. Yeah, let me uh, here. Let me do this. Let me stop share. And let me turn on my document cam and give you an idea of what we're shooting for here. So really what you're supposed to be doing here is uh, you'll have a giant circle like this where your constellations will be. And maybe this will be May 1. And then a 30 degrees over, that'll be, okay. or excuse me, March 1. And then 30 degrees over will be May. 30 degrees over, we're actually up to 90 by then, so I really should do it here. <laughs> That's June 1. <laughs> And you put your constellation like May, let's say, was Sagittarius, which it clearly was, or March, which clearly wasn't, okay? Uh, but then inside of this, you're going to have another circle that is the Earth's orbit, and then inside of that is another circle that's the sun. Got it. Similar to the moon diagram, except this one's just with constellations. Exactly. And the constellation should always be in the proper orientation. Like if you see Sagittarius look like this, when you're looking at it at midnight, then it should be drawn like that. If you see it tilted like this, gotcha. then you so should draw needs, it like that. That's it the needs thing. to be in, in the position it is on that night. Exactly. In and that try to line up with this part exactly what star or exactly what part of the constellation was lined up with April 1. So it'll be more uh, precise. And like I said, Ophiocus may or may not come into, uh, into play. So you could also include Ophiocus as a constellation. Uh, by the way, if you ch choose to do the 15th, uh, I wouldn't put it on this diagram unless it's an entirely different constellation. But you can actually put that to give you a better feel 
And uh, like I said, maybe I would stagger it up here and put, you know, March 15th here, uh, April 15th here, May 15th here, June 15th here, something like that. Maybe at the 15 degrees after the first one. But yeah, if you just do individual 30 degrees, that should give you roughly uh, one constellation mark for the beginning of each month. So does that make sense to everyone? I get it now that you put the picture of, yeah. Yeah, and now you can uh, now you can answer the questions that we used to ask in that chapter two, which is, okay, uh, at sunset, March one, what constellation is directly overhead? Okay, so and in again, that case, it would be Sagittarius on your picture. Directly overhead at sunset, of course, the the Earth is, well, actually, the Earth is orbiting this way, right? And then that means the Earth is rotating this way as well. So sunset would be right here, and it would be not this constellation, but down here, it would be this constellation, Sagittarius, like she said. Okay. Okay, so when we draw the picture for the lab, we just attach it to the PDF? Yeah, uh, you actually take a photograph of it, stick it in yeah. the Word document uh, with zero margins if you want. When you're doing a picture, by the way, if you leave a half inch between the edge of the paper or the edge of the picture and your actual drawings, then you can put it with zero margin uh, in the layout thing in Word and then just paste it in there and make it as big or small as you need to fit. Just for everybody, if you don't have Adobe Scan as an app on your phone, I suggest you go to the app store or whatever Apple store and uh, download Adobe Scan. That way you can just sort of hold your phone over your picture and it will convert into a PDF and you can send it to yourself, download it into your computer and then upload it onto uh, Canvas. Yeah, I use Fast Scanner Pro, but I just discovered this weekend, here's something interesting for those of you who have Apple phones, I'm not sure about uh, what Samsung does or any of those other phones, but I have notes. And if you create a note, you can then do photograph and it gives you a scan op uh, a scan documents option. So you, it actually has a built-in scanner. You don't actually have to download a new one if you don't want. I just discovered that literally uh, Friday or Saturday. But yeah, under a new note, you can just do picture and notice it says scan document or take photo or video. So you can do that and you can save it as a JPEG or a PDF. Uh, I found uh, if you're just gonna turn in the PDF, then, then that'll be fine. You don't actually have to turn in the whole lab uh, for this particular lab. But if you wanna turn in the whole lab, then you probably need it as a JPEG or a ping or a GIF or something. And then you can actually upload it into Word. Okay, so yeah, there's a, a little technological barrier that's always a, a possibility of a pain in the butt, but uh, generally speaking, if you just turn in the document, then turn it in as a PDF. Uh, if you turn in uh, it with the lab, then you probably need to save it as a JPEG or a GIF and then do file, in, or excuse me, do insert at the top heading in Word, and it'll allow you to insert a photo. I have not there's probably a way you can insert a PDF. I just haven't found that in Word. Uh, can we just can we just submit them submit a submit two uh, submit two just submit the picture and the Word document separately? You don't even need to turn the Word document in, uh, in honestly. So you could do that, but I would just uh, all I need is a diagram with your name. Yeah. So I can just yeah. draw it in. I I can just draw it in paint or whatever. Yeah. Just make sure it's a PDF. I don't want JPEGs and I don't want Word documents. That's the main thing, okay? Anybody else have any questions on that? Okay, you guys are done, and that's that's all I really needed. I just wanted to make sure you guys uh, knew how to do this. This lab isn't that hard. I'm probably going to make it a you know a first, second, third week lab for future semesters. Uh, but I finally worked it. I took the time to make it myself, and I didn't ever want to create a lab that, that I haven't done myself. So it took me a couple of weeks to finally make it. And uh, actually I'm a perfectionist, so it took me about three hours to do it. But I, I suspect you can probably do it in 45 minutes if you really put your mind to it. And you guys are free to go. Oh, by the way, I just sent out an email to everyone in the class. 
I'm sorry I cut class a little short today. My sister-in-law came in and my sister-in-law doesn't normally visit. So I just had to make sure everything was okay. And I had to leave. I'm going to finish that chapter when we get uh, our next meeting. So I'll, I'll finish up the parts that I sort of rushed through, but then I'll jump into chapter 20 as well, where we're talking about Milky Way galaxy. So I, I might actually be able to finish both of those uh, on the next time. The other thing I emailed you about is uh, not only week 12 and 13, but previous weeks I've yeah, went back yeah, and put in after point opportunities. In other words, I've, I've written some more reflection questions for previous chapters that didn't have reflection questions. So you might want to go back up and look at some of the astro point opportunities uh, for more one, chances two, three, for reflection questions. Four, and you might also want to look in uh, last week, week 12, as well as this week, week 13. I put some extra videos on relativity, on galaxies, on black holes. Uh, those are good for learning, but you can also use them if you want to write uh, a write up on them. I can give you astro points for that as well. Somebody ask a question. How many Astro points are the video write-ups? Uh, the video write-ups probably be at least 50 points. Uh, if they're longer videos, they usually get to 100 or 150. And we can do I that. Like a movie, video. it'd probably be 200 points. We can do that for each video that you post it? Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a good one that I really recommend by Leonard Susskind. And that's actually a whole course that he taught at Stanford uh, that you're welcome to do. Of course, that one would be well worth more than 200 points, but that you, you know, end up watching the whole course, which I think was maybe 10 videos. But anyways, it's just a lot of opportunities for you to learn more stuff and to get more uh, material under your belt and have a better understanding of even relativity without really the math. Because he taught that Stanford course. It was for, uh, it's like a Stanford night course. So all the community will come to these classes and they'll get credit, but it's not like a, towards a degree. So they don't really have prerequisites. You know, he might every now and then drop into some really brutal math for those that are in the audience that know it, but really he's trying to give you a presentation that's independent of all that. So it's really some cool courses you can watch at Stanford and Caltech and MIT and Harvard that way. Yale as well. I took a, I took a history of the New Testament at Yale that way. I took a history of the uh, historical Jesus course at Stanford that way. So it's a lot of cool stuff. I heard somebody say something. Was that a question to me or are you just talking in the background? I think they were just talking in the background, but um, is there a video or not a video, but is there a photo for us to turn these in? The video write-ups? Oh uh, yeah, there's a link. Uh, oh, the video write-up. Okay, so uh, in that, let me go back and look in my uh, course portion, which is right here. Uh, let me show you where I probably would do it. I think I might have made something already for it, but I want to double check. Yeah. So let me share my screen now that I got the right screen up. I'll see you later, Professor Kelly. All right, see ya. Uh, so if you look down here, I've got a place where it says Astro Points turned in here. Mm -hmm. So I now got a link for all the reflection questions for all the chapters. So that's where you can turn in that extra stuff. Right. Uh, let me see what I listed down here. Basically, a uh, movie would be the would be uh, the probably the best place for this. Okay, and we just turn in all of them. So yeah, that that's the movie analysis. That would be okay. I'll actually put another link up here. Yeah, I'll just put a whole different link, and I'll just say uh, video Astro points for lecture videos or something like that. Okay. Okay, I'll make it while you are watching, so y'all can see what it is. Uh, but yeah. Everybody's free to go other than that. So let me know if you uh, have any more questions. I'll wait for the last person to cruise and you're good to go. So let's see. Uh, We now have extra lecture video write-ups. And I'm gonna edit that, make it online. Anybody else have any questions? I think just about everybody's left, but you're welcome to go if you want, but I'm here for questions.